our strategy for international marketing can depend on our company and of course on the industry and competition. Okay, so we're going to look a little bit at a case about that today. But we were discussing about competitive advantage and a company's competitive advantage in the last class. And a con company can have a different competitive advantage in a different country. <coughs> so we also started talking about competitive strategy. So we talked about Porter's five forces. So these are the kind of things that people study in the MBA course or a business strategy course, right? So we're not studying in depth, just on the surface of this one. We should understand about that a little bit. So we said that there are these five forces. And <coughs> we discussed about barriers to entry in the last class, how to stop people entering. So we said there was uh, you know, economies of scale, making some cost for the customers to switch, capital requirements, needing a lot of money, access to raw materials, distribution channel, government policy. So, I can answer this question. Does coffee retailing have a high barrier to entry? So I'll discuss with your partner these two questions. First, do you think there is a high barrier to entry to open a cafe? Okay. Secondly, there's not. How, how did Starbucks try to deter the new competitors or create a barrier to entry after it entered Korea? So discuss with your partner. Which is their strategy to compare it? Selling. 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 Okay, so mainly it doesn't have coffee. Sh setting up a coffee shop is not usually an industry with the high barrier to entry, right? Mm -hmm. So we already explained the problem. You set up a coffee shop, you're doing really well, making a big profit. What's going to happen? You set up a coffee shop next to the university, you start to make a big profit. What's going to happen if there's a low barrier to entry? There could be all more and more competitors. Somebody else is going to start a coffee shop, right? It's not that hard. They just lease the property, lease the office, invest some money, and start a coffee shop. Okay? And then you don't make as big a profit. So what does Starbucks do? Starbucks is competing in that kind of industry without the high barrier to entry. So how do you think Starbucks makes a profit, even though it hasn't, doesn't have a high barrier to entry? Or how can it stop the competitors from taking away its business? Korean students like going to the cafe, right? Where did you buy the coffee? Hmm? Where did you buy the coffee? The Hoon Moon sells coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Does the back gate sell coffee? <laughs> What's the name of the place? You don't know? Hmm? Why did you buy there? There was only one. What? Only one shop there? Okay. Does it do good business? Are you going to set up a coffee shop now when you go home? At the back gate? Right. So, anyway, Korean people, young people drink a lot of coffee, right? How often do you guys go to the coffee shop? 
time in the week. Right. Do you go to Starbucks or you don't care? Starbucks is too expensive. Starbucks is too expensive, right? So how does Starbucks, how do you think they make money then? How can they make money that people don't just go to the other coffee shops or they don't just lose all their profits? So discuss with your partner. The high cost is uh, becomes uh, <coughs> competitive. Yeah, that's <laughs> Okay, so it's not an easy question, right? So, Starbucks doesn't want many competitors around this Starbucks, right? So how does it deter them? So does anyone have any idea? Does anyone have any idea? Yes? Because of rent. So what about rent? Uh, uh, in that it has better quality uh, because of its name, mm. Starbucks. It's known worldwide. Okay. That's why. So that's better quality. Yeah. Use the better quality what? Coffee beans? Maybe. So more expensive coffee beans. Okay. Anything else? Maybe. Yes. They are providing the customized service. Customized service. Anything else? They can start promotion. Hmm? They can start promotion. What kind of promotion? Like, um, special sale. Special promotions, yes. They create new menus. They can create new menus, right? They're all good marketing things, right? They can lose money on their promotion, right? We talked about that before. To put their competitor out of business, right? Uh, they have good innovation, right? Anything else? Comfortable environment, right? So this is the main one that Starbucks puts up the barrier to entry to the other ones, right? Because in order to get the same environment as uh, Starbucks, you need to spend a lot of money, okay? So I could set up a coffee shop, but it's not going to be that nice inside unless I spend a lot of money. Right? How much do you think Starbucks spend on the interior design? A lot, right? So I need to spend a lot too if I want to compete with Starbucks. So this is one way that they're able to make a barrier to entry where there is none, right? They spend a lot of money on their interior, right? Maybe, I don't know, just guessing, EOC in the big one, right? then you need to spend EOC too if you want to compete with Starbucks, right? So now are you going to start your cafe? Maybe not, right? You think, oh no, I thought I could start a cafe with just Ochan Man One, right? Yeah. Well now I need EOC. Because Starbucks has a much better comfortable environment, okay? <coughs> so that is a way that the company can try to make a barrier to entry. Okay? Then other things, they have the advantage of course of being a very big company so they can get the coffee bean maybe better price, okay? Better quality, better price. Is somebody who's trying to get it? It's not locked. So, the strategy then is, uh, in this case, we look at the five forces and we position the company where the forces are weak. And then we take an advantage of the change in forces and we can reshape the forces in your favor. So Starbucks was trying to reshape the forces, right? Change the coffee industry so that the coffee cafe has a very expensive and uh, nice interior. So let's look at some examples. So in the truck industry, we have a lot of direct competitors. Do you understand truck industry? 
selling trucks, right? There are a lot of competitors who are selling trucks, like uh, Volkswagen, Mercedes, so on. So the prices are quite low competition, low prices. Customers. Customers like to buy a lot of trucks together. They don't buy just one truck usually, right? They buy a lot of trucks. Suppliers. Unions are strong. So the union, the work, uh, the price of the suppliers is going to be high because the, do you understand the union? <coughs> No down hop we that kind of thing. And substitutes, companies can use the train instead, right? So uh, they want to look at some weak point where they these are all customers are quite strong because they buy a lot of trucks, right? If we have a lot of customers just buying one, the customers are weaker. But if we have a small number of customers buying a lot, then they're very strong, right? Uh, we don't want to, the, there's already low prices, so we can't really compete on price, it's hard, right? Uh, we can't get a better price from the suppliers, and we, people could use the train. So we just focus on one part where we can make profit. So this company focuses on luxurious sleeper cabins for individual buyers, okay? So they decided uh, we are going to focus just on this, it's like a niche market or just one part of the market where there's an opportunity, okay? Do you understand luxurious? Yes. So the sleeper cabin means that the truck driver can sleep. So there are some people who have their own truck company, they just one person with their truck, right? So they're selling just to this small market. One person with their truck who wants to sleep. Especially, I don't, not sure about Korea, but in Europe, if they are driving across Europe or the US or Canada, it takes a few days, so they can sleep in the truck too, sometimes, or take a break. And uh, that person might be willing to spend some more money, because it's for themselves. So they focus on this point of the market. So they look at the different forces and look for a gap. So that's the first example. The second example is when the forces change, we can take advantage. So, if we're first to take advantage of the forces changing, then we can get advantage over our competitors. So, an example here is uh, record companies. So, customers were using illegal downloading of music, making a substitute for their services. So, substitute was one of the forces, right? Do you do illegal downloading? No. No? Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> So Apple took advantage of this situation by making a deal with the record companies to sell their music on iTunes. Do you use iTunes? No. You, do, do you use Ole Music? <laughs> no? Ole Music like iTunes? So it means that Apple was very quick to understand that they can't just sell the CDs like before, right? Nowadays, people want to download the music. Okay, so they changed quickly, and they made a deal to sell the songs for usually one dollar a song on iTunes. So they lost money. It wasn't as profitable for them as before, but they adapted quickly, so they were ahead of the other companies. Okay, and then reshape the forces. So try to change the force in your favor. So. We have to differentiate our product, make it different from the other competitors. Uh, try to expand our services, make better service for more customers. Somebody said here, customized service. So Starbucks also doing customized service. Suppliers, also Starbucks use better quality. So more, more uh, specific specifications. So they have to get a better quality coffee bean. So then the other cafes can't really compete that well because Starbucks has some very special coffee bean. Okay? So we try to, to use these forces to get some advantage, competitive advantage, or strat it's a strategy, right? So just we mentioned that, just uh, we didn't, don't go into that in depth. Uh, just we want to just think about this internationally as well. So just discuss with your partner. How should companies, how can they use this strategy when deciding to sell internationally? So 
Do you think that the company can find a different strategy in the international? Is Starbucks the same in Korea as other countries? They have to use the same strategy or they could use a different strategy in a different country. So I'll discuss with your partner about this question. Okay, so just we can say that the same as the competitive advantage, that these things can be different across different countries. The forces can be different. We can have different types of competitors, right? Perhaps in Korea, the coffee market could be very competitive for Starbucks compared to Ireland, for example. In Ireland, people don't drink coffee at all much, right? Uh, so there aren't that many coffee shops. So Starbucks could ha have a different strategy in Ireland, okay? But when they come to Korea, they might have a lot of competitors, okay? And very easy to open a cafe. Maybe in Ireland it might be more difficult to open a cafe. Just for example, right? There might, you might have to get a license or pay higher fee, that kind of thing. So uh, depending on the forces in different countries, we can make a different strategy uh, in different countries. Okay, so... <coughs> then let's... Uh, do you have any question about this part? So we're going to do the case study, we're going to look at the positioning, product positioning and competitive advantage in the gaming industry. Right? So let's have, first of all, let's have a show of hands. Who owns a game console? Console at home. You have a game console. Do you understand game console? Do you have a game console at home? Put up your hand. Just three people? In Korea, you like online gaming? Don't like game consoles? Are you familiar with game consoles? No? We're going to talk about the PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Wii and the Microsoft Xbox. Do you know those consoles? Yes. yes. Have you played them before? <coughs> This one, PlayStation 4, right? Uh, we have the Nintendo, Nintendo Wii. Looks like this. Okay, you can use the hand controller and some movement, some games like this. And we have the Microsoft Xbox. So these are the main three uh, competitors in the game console or gaming industry, right? The, perhaps the Xbox and the PlayStation is more uh, higher competition than the Nintendo Wii a little bit more for the family kind of thing, right? So, then hands up, who has an, an Xbox? Anybody have an Xbox? Nobody? Who has a PlayStation? PlayStation? Anybody with Nintendo Wii? Nintendo Wii? Is it fun? Do you play with your family together? No, I, I have older version. Older version? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I see. So, we're just going to read about these three products. 
And we're going to try and make a positioning graph and understand what is the competitive advantage of these products compared to the other product. Okay? And we're going to look especially at the PlayStation 4 and think about some strategy for the PlayStation 4. They're going to sell in Korea or globally. So just some people are going to read about the Xbox and tell us the Xbox competitive advantage and where it should be positioned. Some people are going to read about the Wii and tell us about the Wii's competitive advantage and where it should be positioned. And then some people are going to read about the PlayStation. So uh, let's say that this side of the class will read about the PlayStation. So you just read from the PlayStation 4 launch and down. Okay? Tell us about the PlayStation. And then this group here, you can read about the uh, in Xbox. Okay? Or actually, you guys can read about the Wii because you have a Nintendo Wii. <laughs> you can read about the Xbox here. Okay? So just read about it, it's just a one paragraph, okay? Maybe you already know something about it. And try to think, what's the positioning, what's the competitive advantage, right, of the product? How is it different from the other products? <clears throat> what makes it different or special? Why would people buy that product? Do you have any question about the vocabulary? Not 
to understand every word, right? Just try to pick out what's the advantage of the console. <coughs> Has the advantage or different? What makes it different? And where is it positioned? Discuss with your partner, see if they think the same as you. Sorry, ask that. Talk about what's the competitive advantage of the product and its position. And ask your partner. What is the competitive, what's the differentiation or competitive advantage of the Xbox? Anybody in this room here can tell me some things. Something unique or different about the Xbox? It has practical design. So we're talking about Xbox now. Oh. <laughs> it's a higher price. It's a high price. <coughs> okay. Anything else? Lower resolution. Lower resolution. So that's not an advantage, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Can play more entertainment. Uh, so more at the entertainment. What do you mean by entertainment? Microsoft Xbox, so it's linked to other things, right? Like the internet, right? That kind of thing. Impress the controller. Impress the controller. The controller. At the internet, you can do multiplay, right? On the internet. Apps, entertainment, it has an apps. <coughs> so it's like a living room, right? Something you can use in the living room. You can add, join with the other things, okay? Uh, then what about the PlayStation? What's the advantage of the PlayStation? It also provides the uh, Netflix system. It's joined in with Netflix. Do you know Netflix? It's a streaming. No. 
Not in Korea, right? Yeah, but there is, there is in Korea. Just when did it start? Just a few time ago. Short time ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We just started. Just started. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, slicker and wider. Slicker. Yeah. What does slicker mean? So more attractive looking design, yeah. right? Lighter. Anything else? Accessories. Accessories. It has a lot of accessories. They expanded <coughs> internationally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, every one of them is selling across the world, right? Globally, mm -hmm. in all the continents. You can purchase some of the, the camera separately. Here the camera is included. So you don't have to pay for camera. And there are a lot of promotions. Promotions like great, like yeah, great Huawei's Huawei campaign. So their marketing had some yeah, competitive marketing. advantage, right? They made some YouTube campaign and when you want to buy an extra camera or something, you can get a discount as well. Okay. Yeah. And who is uh, who are they aiming at? <coughs> station? Maybe we didn't hardcore. read all the this information. But hardcore gamers, like so games. This is more entertainment system, right? This is more uh, aimed just at the hardcore gamer. Do we have any hardcore gamers in this room? <laughs> hmm? Are there any hardcore gamers here? <laughs> Used to be? Yeah. How many hours a day did you play games? When I was young, more than 8 hours. More than 8 hours a day? What kind of game? Everything. So you're finished now? <laughs> Retired? You played <laughs> enough? I did, yeah. Okay, so that's a hardcore gamer, right? So PlayStation want to sell to the Hardcore gamers like what? Teens. Teens. They teens. like speed and graphics, that kind of thing. Hardcore teens. What else? Okay, then what about the Wii? What's the competitive advantage of the Wii? Uh, handheld touchscreen gaming device. Hmm? Handheld device. Touch gaming device. Touch screen. Handheld. Touch screen device. There were different modes for this touch 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 screen device. That is, uh, it, it can act like a controller, like a controller for television. Okay, this has different functions. Also, GamePad has installed uh, accelerometer accelerate, accelerate and gyroscope. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, those things mean that it has, uh, it can, uh, let's just call that near field communication. So they, it means that they can follow the movement, right? Yeah, and also plus front facing camera. So all of those things is just they can follow the movement of the body. Okay, that's the main advantage, right? The Wii. <coughs> so this is tar is targeting the younger audience, right? Yeah. So younger audience like that kind of thing. Or the family can play together. Kind of <coughs> So then if we put on the Graph, which one is the highest price? Xbox. Xbox. <coughs> is that also highly differentiated, or do you think? Mm, highly differentiated really. means very high quality or different. Mm, no. no, so high price but not highly differentiated around here. What about the PlayStation? High quality. 
lower price than Xbox. So it's lower price than the Xbox, but is it more differentiated or less differentiated? More, more, more differentiated. More differentiated, so you're going to put here. And what about the Wii? What's the price of the Wii? Not written. Hmm? Not written. Not written. It's not written. Does anybody know? Is it more expensive or less expensive than the... Do you think it has a lot of reasons people would buy or quality? Like we could have differentiation or quality here? No. Maybe it's not. It could be around the same as the Xbox, right? So you can see the positioning of PlayStation here. It's more a little bit more differentiation and uh, lower price. So PlayStation made their money mainly by selling the games. We can see here they talk about the price. The console is not much more expensive than the cost. So really they make their money from selling the games afterwards mm. right? to the hardcore gamers. So the next question is then we understand the competitive advantage. Well, we're working for PlayStation. Okay? So, first of all, would you change anything about the PlayStation in the world generally? And then, do you think PlayStation should have a different strategy for a different country? So, for example, you live in Korea, right? So, do you think, how would you change PlayStation's uh, positioning and competitive advantage generally? And if you were working for PlayStation, how would you change it? Would you leave it the same, or do you think they should change something to sell more PlayStations in Korea? Right? Then what do they need to change to sell more PlayStations in Korea? So discuss it with your partner. <laughs> Prices are too expensive, you don't really pay for hundred dollars to play games for free in Korea a lot of times but uh, why it works really well. Okay, so then let's answer the question. So we can start with Korea. What would you change for PlayStation in Korea? Prices. Price? What would you change about the price? Lower the prices. So you're going to make a lower price? Are you going to lose money on the price of selling the console? Mm. 
Yes, but you sell at the cost price. You gain market share, mm -hmm. but yeah, but you lose. But you want to lower the price, even lose money to gain the market share mm -hmm. in Korea. Of course, uh, the PlayStation can we see it can have a different pricing strategy in different countries, right? Because it has some some different technology that you can't if you buy the PlayStation in the US, you can't use in. Korea or Japan, right? The game, you, you have to buy the game from the US. The game from Korea won't work in the, the one in, in the US, right? So we can make a different price in the different country. So you think it's quite competitive, so we want to make market share. Anything else you might change? Uh, I might change the position, uh, I mean, the customers. Uh, mm -hmm. I will uh, set the customers as a keyword. So instead of yeah. going for hardcore gamers, you're going to change to kiddles. Yeah, kiddles. Do you know any kiddles? Yeah, I know some. Kiddles. Are they any in this class? <laughs> They're too young to be a kiddles. They're too young to be kiddles. Yeah, too young. Okay. What are kiddles then? Uh, kiddles are like uh, they have job and they but they like playing gaming and they like to have their own time. Okay. Yeah, they want to spend their own time. Okay, so you aim at instead of hardcore gamers, just kiddos who just they're working, so they don't have that much time, right? Maybe they just have a small small amount of free time. Yeah. They so how how would you change the console? They just have small amount of time to enjoy their console. So I will. So how are we going to change the console to make it more attractive to uh, those people? I will change the. I will put more like, enjoyment, like. The, they have to spend more uh, valuable time, so they have to enjoy more time. So we have to put more games and titles that they can they can enjoy. Okay, so more game titles. Yeah. Even if we have to set a higher higher price, I think they can handle it. So. Okay. More games for Korea, or enjoyable games, different yeah. games, right? What kind of games do Korean people like? Mm, uh, I have no idea, but RPG? Mm -hmm. RPG or shooting game or something. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else change anything about the strategy for Korea? Change the marketing strategies. For mm -hmm. example, they advertise on Facebook instead of YouTube. Because mm -hmm. Korean use Facebook more than YouTube. Okay, so change the marketing. You need to change the marketing for a different country. They're doing the marketing well at the moment, right? But they can still improve for Korea. <coughs> Anything else? What's the reason that people don't buy the PlayStation in Korea? Why don't people buy the PlayStation. If I ask this in the class in the UK or the US, maybe 50% or more people have a PlayStation. Why don't, or have a game console. Why don't people in Korea buy game consoles? They play computer games. Play computer games? So how are you going to get around that problem? To get them to play the console instead of the computer game? Maybe PC game. Hmm? Release PC game, the so same game into console format. Okay, so maybe buy the license for some of the PC games? Like C2 license for PlayStation. So buy license for <laughs> <laughs> League of Legends? <laughs> for PlayStation. Okay. You have to make it internet connectivity, right? Yeah. Yep. So you can play multiplayer. Make a Change the console, maybe more like the Wii or the Xbox. Have some multiplayer function. Connect to the internet. Okay, so we can see that again, we talked about earlier the difference between the global and the localization, right? So they're going to get some advantage by selling the same console all over the world. Okay, but that might work that well in Korea because they need to customize in Korea to sell more consoles, okay? So maybe PlayStation need to do some of these things to improve in Korea. 
But there, they may also say that, well, we get more advantage by thinking globally. And we use the same strategy and the same console all around the world uh, in so many countries, right? So we might decide not to customize for every country. Right? But otherwise, we can uh, look at our positioning. Certainly price, we can make different pricing strategy for different countries. Companies do that, okay? We already talked about McDonald's. Choose a different target market. So change your target market. Okay, change the product. So just this case, we just wanted to get the idea of company's competitive advantage compared to competitive advantage and position, right? So the first part of your uh, marketing plan, which you're doing for your final project, is going to be to look at the company, industry, and competition. Okay, so your product, you need to look at what's the main competition of your product. Okay, maybe you could choose the PlayStation, right? So briefly give the competition and the competitive advantage of the competition, okay? And you should include this kind of diagram on your, on your report, right? Where is your product positioned against the other ones, okay? And then you're going to be talking about a specific country. So later, in, we'll talk about more later, how to adapt the product or how to adapt for a specific country, right? But first of all, we just went into that question a bit here, but mainly at this point we're just looking at what's our competitive advantage and what's our positioning. And how can we change that? We might need to change that for different countries and different situations. Okay? So do you have any question about the company, the industry and the competition? Do you think you can do that for one product? You can find out your company's strategy and competition, compare them. Okay, then let's move on to the next uh, part. But actually, we can take a break now before we move on to the next part.